Hey everybody, my name is DJ, but everyone calls me Rehab in High Heels. You can definitely find me on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, as well as LinkedIn. So on today's show, we're going to talk about how I was at a negative $259 and I ended up making $114,000 off of one deal. So stay tuned. So 2015 was not the best year. Um, my dad passed away in 2011. My grandmother passed away on my birthday. So I had a lot of death that were uh, coming around my family. I made a decision to move back to Houston with no job. Uh, so when I made it back to Houston, I put my things into the storage and I ended up losing that as well. And then I lost my car. So I was in this very tumultuous, just losing things. Until I spoke to this guy, until this day, I don't even know how he found me or how I found him. And I'm very grateful for him to introduce me to wholesaling. So of course he dropped that in my spirit. I went to University of YouTube, Googled what is wholesaling and how to wholesale. And I saw all these different checks and you can do it too. And you know, I'm like, yeah, but you're not telling me what to do. And so I end up uh, luckily finding a RIA that's located here in Houston. And just like the night before they had a meeting. So I decided to go there hoping that they would tell me, you know, what's what's wholesaling and what all it's all about well they had a three-day uh event that following day or the next day and i ended up winning the raffle ticket to attend the three-day um course and so i woke up early in the morning i was hungry you know i just knew for a fact that i have to understand what in the world was wholesaling so made it there sat in the front and record. I knew for a fact that if I don't obtain all this information, then I probably won't even get started. So during that time, the three day, I'm doing the homework. I broke the board. I um, met some really cool people. I ended up signed up for their boot camp that following like two, like, I think it was like, what? December, yeah, December of their last boot camp for 2015. So I signed up. They said, you can get involved. And I just knew that I was so desperate to find out about wholesaling. So went to their course. They really honored what they had stated. Um, we can shorten your learning curve from one year to six months. And they did do that. So once I was finished with the course and all the tools that they had provided, all I had was plenty of time. And so I did driving for dollars. I found this really big white burned down property. And what I ended up doing was I started skip tracing. You know, that's all I knew how to at the time. And till this day, that's what I know how to find anybody. So I found the uh, estate holder of the deceased, I ended up meeting up with her at a library, you know, such an elderly lady. And I, um, when I saw her, she reminded me of my grandmother and I said, wow, you know, she almost looked like her. So I was kind of, you know, misty eyed. So, um, sat down with her, said, Hey, I definitely would like to purchase your property. And she wasn't having it. <laughs> oh, gosh. She was not one. I mean, she didn't. She didn't want to sell it. I mean, she didn't want to sell it. Um, so I was like, well, what are you going to do with it? You know, she's like, oh, I'm going to fix it out. I'm like, well, Miss Blake, do you not understand that you got, you know, a fire and smoke and, you know, what are you going to do? So she said, well, you know, I'm going to talk to my kids. Get back with me. So I called. I 
called her every other week just to build rapport, found out that she was in the hospital for uh, her legs. They ended up taking her to the senior, a citizen home. I went to visit her, uh, brought some pork skins. <laughs> Ugh. bought some port skins for her, just sat there and talked to her. And I kept on asking her about that property. I'm like, well, Miss Blake, what are you going to do with your property? How are you going to, you know, fix it up? Do you need this money? Do you, what, what, do, what do you want? And so finally she gave in and said, look, DJ, um, I do need the money. And so we end up, she said, well, all I need is, how much did she get? It was like $30,000. And I said, okay, that's fine. I can definitely do that. I didn't know if I could or not. So put it down on contract. And I was so excited, but I didn't, you know, at the time, you know, the pressure of your personal life kicking in, you know. I didn't have a car, you know, my inner self was kicking in. It went from, you know, $10 to negative $259. And I was like, okay, God, what you want me to do? So once she ended up signing my contract, I was so happy. And uh, I ended up finding, you know, well, I didn't even say I ended up finding an end buyer, but it took me like another, um, two months because at the time nobody wanted to buy you know a burnt down property the market wasn't really for in buyers it was for the sellers and I just kept on calling and went to a lot of meetups and being creative on financing I said well I'll keep it and I'll turn around and flip it and so I went back to her my my contract was almost up and I'm like well it's Blake can you, you know, give me an extension? She's like, all right, I'll give you an extension. And she was so sweet. And the only reason why she did that was because I built rapport with her. You know, I talked to her, got to know her, got to know the history of her husband that he ended up owning eight properties of, you know, buy and hold when he had, before he passed. So fast forward, I end up talking to my listing agent and, um, to negotiate this type of contract to put it on the MLS. And this was a hoteling. I didn't do anything with it. Um, I, I didn't have any money to do anything with it. So I ended up talking to my listing agent. We came together and worked something out to allow me to give her the 30,000 and I'll take the difference. So at the time, uh, I did the ARV, it was like 90,000, but all she wanted was 30, so I'm not gonna push her. <laughs> if that's all you want, that, then that's fine, but I want to be fair as well. So fast forward, did the ARV, ran the comps, while my listing agent is doing his part, I'm searching for an end buyer. So an end buyer came like two of them came to me and they said, well, we'll do it for 70,000. And I'm like, nah. And I actually t confided in my listing agent. I said, look, I want to sell this property. I am, I don't have any money. I don't have any type of money. So what can we do? So we came, you know, I talked to him every day and I talked to her every day and I'm still going out and looking for property. So I end up finding, we actually had a bidding war actually. We had three um, end buyers. First it was 70, then he told another list, another end buyer, you know, you gotta do better than that. Then they went from 70 to 90. And then I'm like, cool, let's sell it. And he's like, no DJ, I think we can get more. I'm like, <laughs> I don't have anybody. And my time with this contract is wiring down. So we need to do something. So then uh, 
a gentleman that was looking at one of my posts hit me up and said, look, I'm interested in buying your property, all cash. Um, I want to offer you $150,000. And so I said, well, let me do my due diligence. Uh, and so it was a different way of closing. And I have never heard of it. Again, this is my first deal. So I wanted to make sure I reached out to my mentor and say, hey, this is how this investor is structuring this deal. Is this a good deal? How do I know he's a in like a true buyer? And he gave me the steps. He told me to make sure I saw proof of funds. He made sure that I didn't uh, ask the right qualifications on my in buyer. And I did that. And it's so important to find out if this person is just trying to be, uh, what I want to call it, a fake investor, or is this a real true investor? So once I did my due diligence, he was a true investor. So I ended up getting a earnest money check, took it to the title company. I brought Miss Blake to the title and she was happy. I was happy. And I ended up walking away with a check of $114,000. Wow. You know... Think about thinking about that one deal. Of course, you can tell. I'm um, one second. Uh, Teary eye because the work behind it, the process of searching and not knowing, you know, what is a wholesale, and was it easy? No, it really wasn't because I had some red tape I had to deal with. Uh, my personal life, but at the same time, the property had, you know, red tag, I had to deal with the city, but all in all, I end up learning how to overcome and become a problem solver. I skipped trace, I solved the problem, I was a coordinator. Not only that, I was a chauffeur. I had to pick up Miss Blake, take her to the title company, and she was so excited because she ended up getting what she asked for. She didn't have to pay any closing calls. And it was quick. So the moral of the story is pretty much uh, follow-up. It's so important to follow up on leads that you don't think will work. It's important to ask the right questions because I didn't know what question to ask. It's important to build relationships with listing agents and go in and attend to networking events because you will find your end buyer. I hope my story inspire you to push through your, uh, your concerns. Can you do this? The answer is yes. Are you willing to do this? The answer is yes. If you don't know anyone and want to know more information, look in the description box. I am a mentor. I want to pour into you. Make sure you leave plenty of comments. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. Make sure you click the notification button because all I'm going to do is pour nothing but factual content. I'm still a wholesaler. I'm still a flipper. I am a true real estate investor, and I want you to be one as well. Talk to you soon. Bye.